Blackbeard, the most infamous pirate in history, by Becky Batchelor. Blackbeard was born around the year 1680 in Bristol, England. Little is known about his early life, but in 1716 he joined the crew of Benjamin Hornigold, a pirate who operated from the Caribbean island of New Providence. This was Blackbeard's first foray into pirating, and little did he know he would soon become one of the most notorious pirates to sail the high seas. Blackbeard was known by many different names, but he is most infamously known as Edward Teach. It was the custom of pirates to use fictitious surnames while engaging in the business of piracy so as not to tarnish the family name. And Teach's real name will likely never be known. Edward Teach made his home in Bath, North Carolina and created a castle for his crew on Ocracoke Island in the Outer Banks of North Carolina. The Outer Banks are steeped in pirate lore and legend, but the greatest pirate to ever sail the sounds and shallow shoals was definitely Blackbeard. In 1717, Teach took control of Stead Bonnet Sloop and commanded his first crew of former British privateers. He quickly moved on the British vessels traveling through the West Indies and soon took over the ship that would become Blackbeard's most infamous vessel, the Queen Anne's Revenge. 18th century author Charles Johnson stated that Blackbeard had often distinguished himself for his uncommon boldness and personal courage. He also distinguished himself by his appearance, as noted by Johnson in the following passage about the infamous pirate. So our hero, Captain Teach, assumed the cognomen of Blackbeard from that large quantity of hair, which, like a frightful meteor, covered his whole face, and frightened America more than any comet that has appeared there a long time. This beard was black, which he suffered to grow of an extravagant length, as to breath it came up to his eyes. He was accustomed to twist it with ribbons and small tails after the manner of our ramilous wigs, and turn them about his ears. Blackbeard was the most notorious pirate in the history of seafaring. With a beard that almost covered his face, he would strike terror into the hearts of his victims, according to one early account, by sticking cannon fuses under his hat and lighting them during battle. Reportedly a tall man, he added to his menacing appearance by wearing a crimson coat, two swords at his waist, and bandoliers stuffed with numerous pistols and knives across his chest. Blackbeard was notorious for his Jolly Roger, or pirate flag. Each pirate during the golden age of piracy flew his own flag, and Blackbeard's was particularly menacing. Teach's flag depicted a skeleton spearing a heart while toasting the devil. Flying such a flag was designed to inten intimidate one's enemies. In 1718, after two years of pirating, Blackbeard learned that the governor of North Carolina, Charles Eden, would offer him a royal pardon if he stopped pirating. Blackbeard immediately traveled to North Carolina to receive his pardon. He settled in Bath, got married, and continued to travel back and forth between his home and his sloop, which he kept in Ocracoke Inlet. The governor of Virginia, Alexander Spotswood, learned of the pirate's close proximity to Virginia and was angered when he found that some of Teach's crew had settled in a few of Virginia's seaport towns. Governor Spotswood asked Lieutenant Robert Maynard of the Royal Navy to command two sloops to sail to Ocracoke Island and find Blackbeard and his supposed treasure. There was now a warrant out over Blackbeard's head and Maynard intended to receive it. Maynard sailed his two sloops into Ocracoke Inlet, hoping to catch Blackbeard and his greatly reduced crew by surprise. The ships were immediately spotted and men aboard Teach's ship fired on Maynard and his crew. Teach cut the anchor line while his men hoisted the sails. The battle had begun. The ships were run right into each other by their captains, and Blackbeard, surprised that Maynard's ships were so empty of crew, ordered his men to board the opposing sloops. Unfortunately, Maynard had planned for such an attack and had hidden three-quarters of his crew below deck. As Blackbeard's crew boarded the deck, they were taken aback at the number of men that swarmed them, firing and shouting from below deck. Finally, Blackbeard and Maynard came face to face. The two men battled with flintlocks and cutlasses until Blackbeard broke Maynard's sword. As Blackbeard reared back for the final blow, a crew member from Maynard's ship slashed the pirate across the throat. Blackbeard was finished off by Maynard's crew, and the rest of the pirates quickly surrendered. 
Maynard's men hung Teach's head from their bowsprit and threw his body overboard. There are a number of myths and legends that circulated about the demise of Blackbeard. Legend has it that Blackbeard's body swam around the ship three times before finally sinking to its resting place at the bottom of Ocracoke Inlet. That was the end of Blackbeard the Pirate, although his infamy and legacy as one of the greatest pirates in history will live on forever. Avast, this be the end of this pirate tale. Arrgh, mateys! Oh, I forgot to mention, Blackbeard's treasure was never found.